Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Everyday EDC. I wasn't going to do this video. I had no idea I was going to do this video, but here we are, right? So, I was cutting the grass this morning, and the wind has taken, like, these really skinny tree branches that get thicker as they go back. It has taken, like, they're all sagging really bad. So, I figured, let's cut them down. Why not? Let's have some fun with knives. Sorry about the light. So I picked out several knives that are probably not the right tool for the task, but I kind of want to go over, I guess what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a quick review on them all. A couple I may go back and review. Actually, there's three that I intend to go back and review out of five. But I'm going to do a quick review on, like, I wouldn't call it bushcrafting, but kind of yard work style tools, right? So we'll start off with a pocket dump. First things first. In my pocket is my Microtech Ultratech. This is not being used today. What is being used are... So this, I've had for a long time. This is my Spyderco Tenacious, full serrations. This is the only knife that I have in full serrations. I suspect this one's gonna be probably my best friend, but we'll find out. This, I've been meaning to review for a while. This is the Off-Grid Knives Rhino. Really beefy, heavy knife, and that's how this came into play as far as what I think I should do with this. Um, yeah. And actually, you know what? I'm not going to review these knives. What I'm going to do is this will be... I'll kind of steal something from Neve's Knives, which I've been watching a lot, by the way. If you guys don't watch him and for some reason you're freaking watching me, go watch him first. He'll probably stay over there, but that's cool. He has a great channel. But he does this, like, quick five, you know, five knife review. I guess that's what I'll do, but I'll include it in some, like, outside usage tasks. Next on the list is a very heavily used QSP Bison. So this thing is my first fixed blade. I absolutely loved it. Thought it was freaking fantastic. It's just cool. Next on the list, we have the Kaiser Sheepdog XL. You know, if I give this a real review, I'm going to be honest with you guys. I, I don't think I would ever carry this. But this is a situation where it might come useful. I don't know. We'll see. I mean, it will be useful, but how useful is a totally separate situation. And then next is the Civivi Kepler. This one, I'm still not going to actually do a review on, but I should. I mean, it's a newer knife, but you guys kind of see it. See it for what it is. I mean, we'll take it from there. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to I'm gonna turn off the video and I'll go set my setup up outside. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take each one of these knives and I'm going to be doing some random stuff. Mainly, it's going to be cutting down tree limbs from these two different trees. Why don't you guys stay open? You guys not want to be part of the program? And we'll kind of take it from there. A couple ones that didn't quite make it into the video. This one deserves a full review because this can be a legitimate everyday carry knife. Some of these can be too, but that one's not really a good bushcrafting knife for cutting down tree limbs. Same thing with... Uh, can I get this one out? This one's pretty tight. There we go. The Civivi M2. That one's not really going to serve my purposes here. This is more of like smaller, delicate work. That's Ronnie. Um, let's see, I got one more that's not really going to fit into the video, I don't think, because the handle's kind of goofy. This, this little stabby beast is the Kaiser Lancer 2. That's not going to be a part of the video either. I just don't see that kind of fitting in with the others. Alright, so I'm going to take these outside. They're, this has a factory edge, this has a factory edge. This has a, f not a factory edge, I'll strop that up before I go out. This has a factory edge. And this one is just serrations. I'm not even going to touch those up. But I will touch up this bison prior to me starting. Maybe I'll set up the camera and kind of show you guys me doing that before we start. And then we'll go over the blade steels. And then we'll kind of just see what happens to the blade edge as we go through. It's kind of like a Cedra Nada wannabe thing where he goes out and actually does stuff with them. But I figured I got something to do, so let's just make something of it. All right, catch you guys in a bit. And we're back. So what I'm going to try to do here is I'm going to demonstrate at least... How sharp these things are so that we're kind of playing off of an even playing field right like I said these are all factory edges the QSP bison is not necessarily a factory edge it's got a little bit there well I'm not gonna do a full-blown sharpening but what I will do is some what I will do here is take these and I will kind of hone the edges and then what I'll do is I'll take this Strop it after honing the edge. Test it again to make sure it's on an even playing field and then we'll kind of get into it. But this is just so you guys can kind of see what I'm doing to do this. 
Feel free to critique my technique. It's still in practice, but it's been working for me. Now, this QSP Bison is in D2 steel, so that's another thing to consider. I'm gonna be doing some whacking on these knives, right? Like, I'm gonna be kinda chopping away at them. So, this D2 steel along with the Rhino from Off Grid, there you may see some chipping, but I'm gonna be whacking on wooden branches. I don't anticipate that being an issue. See if we're coming close. It's better. Now let's take our strop. I'm gonna strop this up and see if I can get a decent edge. So that, like I said, it's comparable. This isn't like a scientific test, but I do want to keep it as comparable as possible. I don't want to take a dull knife and then kind of compare it to them because that doesn't help the situation at all, right? kind of skews the data, if you will. I was hoping to play music in the background, but I can't play music off of this while recording. I'll have to go get my work phone and play some music off of that. That's all right, though. All right, now that we've stropped it up a little bit more, let's see how this goes. Not good. All right, there we go. That was just a bad cut. Okay, so you've seen that all of these have a pretty decent edge. The only one that I'm not really gonna worry about the edge as much is, is my spider cotinaceous full serrations. Um, this is more or less to demonstrate what full serrations can do versus kind of the chopping and see if that actually helps my situation at all. So I'm gonna clean up here, try to get some music going so we can play some music in the background. Um, or maybe I'll just silence it and kind of talk over it when I'm making the video, I don't know. I don't know, like I said, this is an impromptu. Let's go over the blade steels on these real quick though. So the QSP Bison is coming in in D2 steel. So you guys can kind of see this here. Lay that out down here. This is coming in in 9CR18. This is the Spiderco Tenacious. The Rhino from Off Grid Knives is also D2. They say it's cryo-cooled. I'm not sure how much of a difference that makes. I'm not a metallurgist nor part of their process. I'm sure it adds something. They wouldn't advertise it if it didn't. Because they're a pretty legitimate company. This behemoth actually has 154 cm and the q or the i'm sorry the savivi what is this again the, the kepler this is coming in 9 cr18 so i anticipate these guys being a little bit more sturdy i anticipate these two if anything chips i anticipate these two chipping all right let's pause the video try to get some music going go check on the kids and then we'll get out here and get to it all right so first we're gonna be taking the Rhino. I'm gonna hack away, I'm gonna just do whatever I can to get it out of here. Nice clean cut. Not sure if we got that, I'm a little close to the action here. So I went through two, and I'm gonna put this one back, and I'm gonna go through two now on my QSP bike and see how we do. Might have to readjust the camera, so I'll chop this up a little bit if I do. So I think went through two pretty well. Not as actual, actually, so far, comfort wise, the Rhino was way more comfortable. This is just kind of generic. All right. Next on the list, the Big Daddy. Yeah. 
the best so far. That heavy blade shape actually works as like a chopper. So, makes sense, right? All right, next on the list, we will go through the Civivi Kevlar. So what I'm gonna try to do after this, if there's any damage to the edges, I'm gonna show you guys the edges. I won't touch them up or anything. I wiped it off in my pants just to get some debris off, but that's it. Right? Yeah. So I'm going to take these three, which are my clear winners, and kind of take them to the next step. We'll see if I can put them to the test again. The Bison, not a good chopper. It's a good blade, but not a good chopper. The Cryo, decent, but not a good chopper. I mean, it's the blade's a little small. It's a little light in the forward side of the blade, so that's probably why. Be back in a bit. All right, I'm going to chop this into the video just because after I got done with the video, I wanted to have some fun. I had more tree stuff that I had to take down, right? So I'm like, which one was my favorite to chop with realistically? It was the large sheepdog. Super efficient too, right? Okay, so let's take a look at this. So there's the tree we hacked away just with the sheepdog. This took me about 20 minutes. And what happened? All of this. Kind of my point to that is, is a sheepdog probably is the best chopper, but with all that being said, I actually took my spider coat tenacious out there to try and saw away at it. Oh, that chopper works so much better than sawing. Just end that discussion right there. All right, I'm actually going to switch gears. I'm not writing these two off just yet. That was just kind of like a chopping exercise, right? So I'm going to take this. This is slightly harder wood. I'm going to do a couple more hand chops into it just to kind of get it going, and then I'm going to try to shave a little bit. I'm going to do that with each one. I'm kind of actually trying to damage the edge, I guess. And it's bouncing because it's windy outside, sorry about that. Then I'm gonna run it through just a little bit of cardboard. And I'm gonna cut some pieces off and try to run it through. It's not gonna be the exact same for each. I'm really trying to get a feel for how comfortable it is to use. I mean, we talk about these blade steels, we talk about all this stuff, and it's all about how comfortable it actually is to use in the process. It's not really about, you know, that blade chipping or damaging, because typically blades are gonna chip and damage you know with, with some heavy duty use either way so now take that with a grain of salt obviously there's different blade steels for different reasons right but you know it, if you're if you're hacking away at a steel bar expect your sh knife to freaking break all right and then we'll cut some cards at the end kind of get to it and then i'm going to go through an overall thought process here so i won't hack away at this but this is the off-grid knives rhino 
shaving pretty nice, and when you dig in, it feels good. All right, that's what I'm looking for. I want to dig in and see how it feels. So let's go to this edge here. Shaving nice, and when I dig in, oh god, that felt great. This heavy, this heavy forward knife, um, the, like the heavy forward blade on that large dog feels fantastic. All right, here's the Kepler. Shaving really nice, and when you dig in, that feels good. I would say, let me go back and try this one again. So they all feel pretty damn good when you're digging in. All right, let's see here. All right, so here's the bison. Shaving, it actually feels good, okay? But when I dig in, it's just such a neutral grip that I don't feel like I actually got it. You see what I'm saying? I'm not going to try to shave or dig in with this. This is just a serrated blade. That was to kind of demonstrate the chopping ability versus, you know, shut up. All right. Moving on here. Moving right along. Let's take our Kepler. Let's make a nice little cut here. Make another nice little cut. That feels good. What's up, dude? Oh, that's cool. That's cool. All right. So we're going to open this back up and try to cut the same, at least with this one. This is the QSB Bison. The Bison's neutral grip feels good, but it doesn't feel great. I'm, I'm a little less enchanted with the Bison than I once was because it's just falling behind. I mean, this Kepler feels great. This oversized sheepdog feels amazing. And this rhino feels good too. So getting into it. Nice. Even nicer. See, that feels okay, but it's just, it's not, I don't, it doesn't, I don't find it exciting. So that kind of slicing with this didn't feel as good either. This is down here with the slicing of the cardboard. It's just the feeling, right? It's the ergonomic feeling. Sliciness is gonna come with how the blade edge geometry and everything goes. All right, so everything that we've done just now, I'm gonna take a look at these edges, see if I see any damage. It's just gonna be a little dirty. Uh, and then we're gonna try to cut some paper, see if we can anticipate where the damage might be. Fast forward through this real quick, save some time, and all the edges that I checked were actually good, except for the one that you're about to see. I found something on the edge here. Hey, did I find something? Okay, I might have found something, but it's hard. I can't really see it. Right here on the Kepler, it seems like it's a slight roll. It dips right here. Like I can feel, unless it's just a default from the factory, I probably should check that first. But right here, it's catching. And the blade seems clean. Like I said, it's hard to tell. Um, but there's definitely something catching there. Feel free to critique what I'm doing here. This is kind of one of those entertaining videos. And I'm going to be reviewing these knives at the end to kind of say which one I liked. But you guys can fast forward if you wanted to. Alright, last but not least, let's go with the paper cut test again. So despite feeling that, the Kepler doesn't seem to have any issues. No issues at all. I did No hang-ups, no nothing. The QSP Bison, remember, this is the only one that wasn't a factory edge too, but it's just, it's the most neutral grip. That's what I, it, it, it's cool because it's neutral, but like it does nothing well is what I'm noticing. No issues there. D2, if 9CR can hack it, I don't think D2 would have any issues. That's still beautiful on the Rhino. And then last but not least, we have the massive size Sheepdog, which is still, it's its hilarious to try and do like a fine cut with this, right? Like you're kind of going like a super fine edge. Detail work, I should say. It's just kind of funny to me. Alright, All right. now the time to give you guys my thoughts on each one of these, right? Um, I kind of put a little bit of them to the test. This is more about function than it is everything that they are, but I'll try to rip through each one. 
So let's start off with the QSB Bison. This thing, while large, so here it is next to the Sheepdog XL, the Bison's pretty large. Maybe I could use this as my table now. It's not an overhead view, guys, but maybe I can get there a little bit better. Not really, it's still at an angle. Yeah, whatever. So, it's, it's just about as long as a sheepdog. It's still a fatter knife. The grip feels nice. So when you pick it up at first, you're like, that's nice. Like when I first picked it up, I'm like, wow, this is what a fixed blade feels like because this was my first fixed blade. All that being said, sorry for that snafu. This is the first time I'm trying to do this. There's a garbage can in my backyard because I'm mowing the grass and I let it get too long. So don't judge. So all that being said, this is a pretty nice knife. D2 steel, pretty decent grind. You got what appears to be like a forward finger choil, but it only works for the tip of your finger, so that doesn't make sense. You got some jimping on the back and a swedge that goes up with a semi-clip point-ish blade going on with a micarta handle and then some looks like to be T15s right there holding the handle pin together with a lanyard hole. In hand, this neutral grip feels good, but in use by comparison of these other knives that I've used today, it doesn't feel as great. The in-use ergonomics feel a little bit different. This is coming in at about 60 bucks. Can I recommend it? I mean, yeah, it's it's 60 bucks if you're looking for a neutral fixed blade. It's kind of an all-around, a little bit too big, kind of fun. I mean, that, that fits the bill. But there's probably some better stuff out there. It's kind of cool, too. I didn't realize that I'm taking all these. These are all within a similar price point. So my other fixed blade, the Civivi Kepler. This is coming at a 9CR 18 MOV, so this is going to have really good corrosion resistance. And it doesn't, it comes, it's almost a full flat grind, so it has a, well, say three quarters flat grind, right? So it has a long way to come down to that very, very narrow behind the edge with the swedge that comes up here, some jimping going on back here. We have some G10 on the handles. I left the lanyard on reluctantly because that just screams put a lanyard on me. The edges are nicely chamfered. There's no sharp points on this knife. It is a, it's contoured, but it's a little narrow for how big of a blade. It does feel narrow. With that being said, you do have that little finger groove right there. That's where your finger is going to go, guys. That's, but it feels good, and, you, and it's large, so you have some area to move. But that's really where you're going to put your hand. I mean, there's no other place to put that. That's just pretty much where it's going. So this is coming in at, I think it was like 80 bucks. Is it worth the 80 bucks? Well, here, let's, let's take a look at it again. Comes with the Kydex sheath. Uh, I'm not even going over the, it's the Tor knives design. I don't, I don't know. I think, so. I, if I can recommend the Bison, I can recommend this. It's cool. I think the Bison's more of a neutral knife. Uh, but if you're looking for a fixed blade in the same vicinity, which I don't have out here with me, but I have in my house, is a Civivi Elementum fixed blade. I have the black G10 with the black coated blade and D2. I would have rather got the 10CR18 MOV, but I like the look of the black better. Um, I think that's a better version than all of these for an everyday carry. For an outdoorsy knife, hacking jobs and stuff, this is a little narrow. You're gonna not have as much strength, but it's kind of fun to use and it serves its function. And you, you can use this in the kitchen too. It's kind of got that big bellied blade right there. If it had a little bit more belly, it'd be more useful. The long flat does make it a little harder to do like rolling chops, but where the bison kind of takes that one down is this is just more neutral in hand. It's, it's, it's less just gaudy and large. So if you're looking for just kind of like a regular in the woods knife, this works. It's just not as comfortable for certain tasks as Kepler. Next on the list, we have your off-grid knives Rhino. So this is coming in, I believe, Oh God, I got this wrong last time, but I think these are FRN handles. Don't quote me, because last time I said G10, and their FRN and G10 feel really similar because of the texturing that they got on here. It just feels really good. So you got a lot of hardware. The action is stupid. I have no back and forth or up and down blade play in this, but watch this. This is dumb. That action for a folding knife is just incredible. Balls. But we have this nice little thumb ramp right here, and it comes down to like this clip point style, you know, drop point blade. Now, this is a flat grind going on here, and it does get relatively narrow behind the edge. As you can see, the slicing capabilities of this are really nice. 
like it, that, that's that's super smooth, especially by comparison of two fixed blades. But um, I mean, it's a D2, and I believe this price is coming in at like 70 bucks. So it's going to be a little bit more expensive. But I can tell you, in hand, this is kind of incredible. Like the ergonomics feel like manic style. They feel manic style in hand when I first felt the manics because this is fat. You got this nice little thumb ramp right here. It's it's really really nice. Action, great, and then flipper tab here. Flipper tab is nice and rounded with some jimping, and it, it I actually works really well and it's unique, right? So that's cool. Uh, there's nothing I don't like about this knife, other than the fact that it's it's really large. Um, I mean for for an everyday carry, here is your. Spyderco Tenacious, obviously the Tenacious isn't a small knife and it was dwarfing this. I mean the blade length isn't that long. The Spyderco Tenacious is coming in right around the same blade length, but the overall knife itself is just, just a big, big boy. But, <coughs> count it, it didn't go in. So, but, next we have the mini, <laughs> the Kaiser Sheepdog XL. Now. This is obnoxious. You're never going to carry this on a daily basis unless you're just one of those super, super large dudes with oversized pockets. Time out, have to entertain. <laughs> Fail again. Huh. My work phone's ringing and nobody has my number. Odd. All right. But it does have a really thin blade stock by what you wouldn't expect it to see here it's about the same as the rhino but it doesn't look like it would have that same blade stock right so the fact that it has that and it has this giant face to come down with this this i'm just telling you this behind the edge is so stupid just so stupid just absolutely ridiculous so that's where this shines is is the cutting geometry is dumb absolutely dumb but it is also massive i mean here's my fist this thing is just it's, i know it's a bad reference point right but it's just ridiculous hold on here's a great a great example here's a basketball that's how large this thing is by comparison of the rhino compared to a basketball by comparison of the tenacious compared to a basketball here's the sheepdog. Don't touch that. Here's the sheepdog compared to a basketball. So it's gonna be too big. It has an obnoxiously large flipper tab for an obnoxiously large knife, and I kind of wouldn't have it any other way. Ironically, it comes with a recessed, with the screws, screw heads flat, deep carry pocket clip, which is absolutely ridiculous. I mean, that's kind of cool. G10 handles with some decent milling on there, and it's like a peel ply texture. That's sweet apply texture going on there we have this aluminum blue anodized uh, pivot collar which is cool and the pivots gonna be like a t10 it looks like this is another one no back and forth no up and down and the blade plates a guillotine why because it's a freaking guillotine it will chop off your finger not that I've ever found myself in a bad spot it's a liner lock you kind of get out of the way right but all in all this is super fun super cool and I could totally see actual practical use of this kind of like a mini machete out in your yard when you're doing tasks. Wait, there he is, right there. Whoop. When you're out doing your tasks in the yard, like chopping stuff, it's kind of cool. It, it it serves its function. And with the the 154 CM steel, it's going to have decent corrosion resistance, decent edge retention, but it's going to be relatively tough too. So this probably is the best blade, blessed, best blade steel out of all of these. This V2, the Bison, we have D2. And the Kepler, we have D or 9CR. Now the 9CR might be the second best. So, I mean, you're really looking for chippiness, right? You don't want it to chip when you're hacking away at stuff. And again, if you hit the wrong thing, any knife's gonna chip, depending on the heat treat harness, blah, blah, blah. But this is coming in, I think I got this for like 90, 99 bucks. It's just really cool. This is a really cool, fun knife. Same thing with the Rhino. The Rhino is really cool. It's a little bit more practical, super fun, super fidgety. Uh, off grid did a fantastic job on this one. I really, really like this Rhino. The Bison, kind of neutral, kind of boring. I Pete from Sutter Canada called it boring, and I'm like, oh, 
I love that thing. And now that I'm feeling all these other fixed blades, I'm like, yeah, it is kind of boring. It's just, there's nothing special about it, but it's a good looking knife. It's cool. And the price is decent. 60 bucks, like 70 bucks, 90 bucks. And the Kepler's coming in at like 60 to 80 bucks, somewhere in there. I don't remember. The Kepler's probably the most niche along with the this one because this really doesn't have a home. It's wanting to be a fixed blade, but it's a folding knife, so. But the Kepler, it has this unique blade shape. Now, I'm gonna try to use this more and more, maybe give a long-term update on some of these, but all in all, all of these knives, the Sheepdog XL, the Off-Grid Rhino, I believe Off-Grid's made by Best Tech, by the way, the QSP Bison, and the Civivi Kepler, are all very very functional tools guys these are all tools that are great so doing the review versus all of them on stuff that's so niche and so large this is probably like i said the most practical of the bunch but doing a review on all of these just kind of doesn't seem right because of the niche factor it's hard to be like well it's not going to fit in my pocket because it's useless kind of before i used this i thought this was the case i thought this thing was like this is just a novelty and it, it is but in use, out in the yard, it feels great. I, I thoroughly enjoyed using it, and it was comfortable to use. Like, it made sense when I was using it. Definitely more of like an axe type of knife than anything else, though. And I believe this thing's coming in at like seven and a half ounces or something. It's ridiculous. I think that's all I got for you guys. Just kind of wanted to have fun on a Saturday. Come outside, do something a little bit different. Um, hang out. Ronnie and I are outside. He's got a fly. Hang around. Just step in dog poop. Yeah, you stepped in dog poop. Gross. My name's Tyler. This has been Everyday EDC. You guys stay sharp. Stay safe. Have a great freaking day, guys. Thanks for watching. Hey, guys. Thank you so much for watching. If you're shopping at White Mountain Knives, don't forget to use my promo code EEDC. If you're interested in a Patreon, we do a bi-monthly giveaway at about 110% of each month's value. So right now, the value is up to about $70. Last but not least, if you guys have any questions or just want to chat, hit me up on Instagram, Everyday underscore EDC. Thank you guys so much again for watching. Genuinely appreciate it. Stay sharp, stay safe, and have a great freaking day, guys.